Welcome to Hillcrest Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, and a special welcome to those who are worshiping with us for the first time. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today is Palm Sunday, March 28th, 2021, and I'm standing here in the Hillcrest Sanctuary because I wanted to be with Dolly, and I want to be here where our sanctuary is all dressed up. Uh, it's waiting for all of us, and we look forward to that day when we can be in here safely together again. Now, it's Palm Sunday 2021. Our worship series is called Holy Vessels, a Lenten Season of Recovery, and our focus for today is holy, holy, or perhaps easier to hear what I'm saying is if I say it this way, holiness and wholeness. Now, because it's Palm Sunday, our service today will be just a little different than past weeks. And I want you to be getting ready for the great Palm Sunday reading and sing-along, which are coming up in just a moment. So I invite you now to pause the service, if you'd like, and get yourself a palm branch if you can. For most of us, I'd imagine that's not gonna be possible. Or a handkerchief or a scarf or a napkin, whatever serves, and have that ready to wave as we get into the reading. And quickly now, a number of reminders. First, as we've been doing throughout Lent, we've included a ritual of action in your worship bulletin for today. Don't miss it. Secondly, at the risk of getting ahead of ourselves, Palm Sunday leads directly into Holy Week. We have many special and wonderful opportunities in the upcoming week on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and of course on Easter Sunday and on Monday even we'll be posting to our website, an introduction to Holy Week. Keep an eye out for all of that on our website, Facebook, and Instagram, and contact the office if you'd like to be on our contact list for e-blast notifications. Third, Easter is coming. And in place of Easter flower donations, we are asking folks to donate for new and very much needed landscaping along Gregory Lane, where the trenches are now, right outside the windows in that direction. Those will be filled very shortly, we hope and pray, and also further down Gregory by our banner posts. More information on that is in the news of community. In worship, we hear God's word for us, we reflect, we pray, and we share our connection to God, each other, and the whole of creation. Hear now the Palm Sunday Gospel story as told by Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowd that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Thank you. 
And now please take up your palms or a scarf or substitute. I invite you to stand up if you'd like or sit up nice and straight and speak along with me the words on the screen. I will begin. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. And now let us sing. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sang. Through pillared court and temple, the lovely anthem rang. To Jesus who had blessed them, close folded to his breast. The children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. From Olivet they followed amid a cheering crowd. The victor palm branch waving and chanting clear and loud. The one who angels worship rode on in lowly state, and glad to see the children slow down the donkey's gait. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song is ours. We hail our great Redeemer and sing with all our powers. Hosanna, Christ, we praise you with heart and life and voice. Hosanna in your presence forever we'll We have seen that the stories of Jesus' healing ministry are filled with words and deeds. We have seen that Jesus' acts of healing are for all, including those who are considered least. We have seen that Jesus teaches and acts like all of us are siblings, because we are. Jesus offers and models compassion. Jesus offers life. Vessels holy and whole, broken, needing the one, up and body and soul, healer come. As we head into the events of Holy Week, we begin to see that our ability to forgive ourselves and others is the foundation that can transform infirmities and allow us to move on. We integrate our beliefs and actions for the health of the whole. The parade of compassionate power we celebrate today is underscored by another healing story of transformation, this time symbolizing our ability to fuel the movement of recovery. We glorify God for beautiful words and works of wholeness and share this treasured beauty with others. We know there will still be pain, but we also know love will win. Vessels 
most holy and whole, broken, needing the one, open, body and soul, healer come. As we enter into opening prayer, this final Sunday of Lent 2021, Palm Sunday, we recall that each Sunday this Lent we've opened with a prayer of confession. To confess, to lay bare the brokenness, is to open up and to begin the process of healing. It is to, using the words of this worship series, restore our holy vessels. We open ourselves up to God. Let us pray. Forgiving and healing God, help us remember the sacred nature of the holy vessels that we are, made in your holy image, fragile and susceptible to shattering, capable of transformation and renewed wholeness. Help us to see ourselves as you see us. Help us to believe in our ability to change and heal and be made whole. Amen. As the bell calls us to silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. I invite you to close your eyes and once again return to that warm orb of light that lives deep within you. It may already be aglow with the excitement of the opening hymn, the presence of Jesus leading us on. But if you are struggling or have struggled in this season of recovery to feel this warmth of assurance within you, do not despair. You are not the one who has to create the light. It just is. And it is a pilot light that never goes out. You will at some time begin to notice it returning to your awareness. Know this. You are never alone in the struggle. No matter what. Jesus is on the journey with us. Life's parade is not passing you by. You are part of this body of Christ, a community seeking healing. For you, for me, for all. I invite you to imagine the warmth that surrounds you, extending to those who may be next to you in close proximity. 
Imagine it extending beyond your walls to the neighborhood, the wider community, the church, and seeing it spread like the rising sun, let it expand to all the world. Let this be our peace. Let this be our peace. Amen. I invite you to open your eyes and join with me in sharing the peace of Christ as found on the screen. The peace of Christ is with you and also with you. Two processions entering Jerusalem Two opposing kingdoms on display Which of these processions are we part of? Which one will we follow on its way? Shout, Hail Pilate, or Hosanna. When we have a choice, whose praise to sing? Will we trust the violent, mighty ruler? Will we trust the peaceful, peasant king? Two processions entering Jerusalem Power of love against the love of power 
Will we choose the path of domination? Will we let compassion have its hour? God has had a dream of joyful justice. Rome has spun a nightmare of neglect. If we join the common wealth of servants, we may bring God's joy and justice yet. Two processions entering Jerusalem. Realm of hope, dominion built on fear. As we choose the path that love has opened, we will see the realm of hope draw near. Our ancient wisdom reading for today from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9. After getting into a boat, Jesus crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then. Some of the scribes said to themselves, This one is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man, the human one, has authority on earth to forgive sins, Jesus then said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And that one stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God who had given such authority to human beings. This is the good news. Today is Palm Sunday, the day that we remember Jesus and his followers coming into Jerusalem and being greeted by the crowds. And today I want you to think, what does a king look like to you? What does it look like when you imagine a king? What animal are they riding? Maybe a white horse or a stallion. Maybe they're wearing a crown or a purple robe. Maybe a red carpet is rolled out in front of them. Then think about Jesus. When Jesus came into Jerusalem, he wasn't riding a horse. He was riding on a donkey, a much more common animal. He wasn't wearing a crown. He was wearing ordinary clothes and surrounded by people who weren't rich or nobility. And he didn't have a red carpet. Instead, people took palm branches, which you can just grab off of any tree, and put them down in front of him. And yet people were still shouting one of my favorite words in the Bible, which is Hosanna, means hooray or yay. People were still calling him the king of kings and welcoming him to their city. How do you think that the elites reacted when they heard about that? How do you think the king felt? when they saw this random person who didn't look anything like they expected a king to be, being called king, being greeted like a king. What do you think happened next? We'll talk about this more when I see you all at Sunday School. See you there. What a service! Palm Sunday! 
Of course, Palm Sunday itself is a day to get a preacher, and I hope all of you excited. But did you notice? Beside the Palm Sunday lesson for today, we got a second gospel lesson about one of Jesus' healings, an extraordinary lesson. I was thinking about asking our worship team, well, we got two gospel lessons in this service. Does that mean I can preach two sermons today? Or one sermon, but twice as long? Well, I didn't figure either of those ideas would go over so well. So let's get right to it. What do these two gospel stories together about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and about Jesus healing this one who is paralyzed, what do they two together have to do with Palm Sunday, with holiness and wholeness, and with us, all of us? Did you notice the first line of that second gospel reading where it says, And after getting into a boat, Jesus crossed the sea and came to his own town. Now, I'd hardly be exaggerating if I told you that books and books had been written about that one sentence, certainly full lectures given, and many, many scholarly articles. Why? Because we don't know what town it is. It can't be Jesus' hometown of Nazareth, because Nazareth is miles from the seashore up in the hills. It'd be like saying, after getting into the boat in San Francisco, he crossed the bay and came to his own town of Clayton. It, it makes no sense. And furthermore, in this story and the ones that follow, it's clear that Jesus and those with him aren't over the hills or through the tunnel. They've remained along the seashore. Alameda? Oakland? Berkeley? We don't know. And though the scholarly guesswork is fun and informative, I think this is more fun, and I wonder if it isn't what the good old storyteller Matthew, or whoever Matthew got the story from, might have had in mind. That Jesus crossed the sea in a boat that docked in Jesus' own town because, well, what town isn't Jesus's? own town. Jesus is, after all, connected with the Word or the Christ who created everything. And what people, what individual people, what group of people doesn't Jesus identify with and care for and consider his own, God's own? That's snapshot number one for this Palm Sunday sermon about holiness and wholeness. What town isn't Jesus' own? What town or city or nation or region isn't the home of individuals and groups of people that Jesus doesn't identify with and care for as God's children? Snapshot number two. Here it is. It says, if you think religion is what you do in a sanctuary and not on the street, you're doing it wrong. Signed, Every Prophet in the Bible. Well, here we are on Palm Sunday, and certainly Palm Sunday suggests that Jesus would sign on to that statement along with all those biblical prophets. If the Palm Sunday entry into Jerusalem isn't doing religion on the street or in the streets, then I don't know what is. But look further. What about our healing story for today? And most healing stories. And most discussions that Jesus has with people. And most of the teaching that Jesus does. Out there. On the street. Along the seashore. In the marketplace. Where people are. Where they're seen and not seen. Where they're engaged by others and marginalized by others. Jesus is there, seeing all, engaging all. Now, of course, Jesus got nothing against in here either. Jesus regularly attended synagogue weekly, the Bible and our Gospels make clear. He taught in the congregations and he worshipped in the congregations. So if Jesus were going to quibble with this quote at all, I imagine it would be with that false separation or misleading separation of sanctuary and 
street. Jesus and the Bible and our faith don't separate those. What we do in worship together and for our own selves together, what opening ourselves up to God and each other does to us and for us, what God's Holy Spirit does to us and for us, is to heal, to make us whole, to nourish and nurture and call us to make ourselves whole and to do the same for others, individuals and groups and the whole community out there. Just think of the sick, twisted videos we've seen lately. People attacking other people and knocking to the ground others, often elderly others, who they consider other, different, bad, unclean, whatever it is. Whatever it is, it's sick, evidence of sickness in the perpetrator, and in our society, which harbors and nurtures such hate and separation. No. And that's among the reasons why Jesus and God call us in to sanctuary, to worship. Call us to open ourselves to God and each other, all of which quite literally serves as a sanctuary from the evil, destructive, negative energy that drives so many in our nation and world and drives what they do to others and, yeah, what they do to themselves as they go deeper down these paths of hate and separation. God and Jesus call us in to worship, to pray, to meditate, to reflect, to find sanctuary. And then Jesus and God call us out again to live out and to model and to grow in living out life within God's kingdom or kingdom every day. We pray it every Sunday and so many of us every day. Thy kingdom come. Let your kingdom come, O God. And we live it out and show it out, out there in what we do. That's snapshot number two for a Palm Sunday and for a Holiness and Wholeness Sunday. Snapshot three and our final snapshot even as we enter into Holy Week and the darkest and holiest time of the year for us Christians. See this quote from writer and psychoanalyst Jeremiah Moss, quoted recently in a New York Times article called What Does Hope Mean to Excuse Me, What Does Home Mean to Us? about the ravages of the pandemic on all of us, and on some of us more than others and what that has done to our very notions of who we are and what home is. Moss writes, Tragedy breaks us out of the status quo, wakes us up, and in that wakefulness we can be more humane. Isn't that what Jesus shows with every step he takes along the street, along the seashore? along his journey to Jerusalem this Lent and every Lent, in his time in Jerusalem interacting with regular people, with religious leaders, with government officers, even in that darkest and, yes, holiest of times, as he is being tried, if you want to call it a trial, and executed. Tragedy breaks us out of the status quo, wakes us up, and in that wakefulness, we can be more humane. Well, we cannot be more humane than Jesus, but we can and do follow Jesus' lead and respond to Jesus' call to practice our own humanity, beginning by recognizing and responding to the humanity in others. Among the many mysteries wrapped up in the core mystery of our Christian faith, 
that the divine has become human. Is that to be fully human, as Jesus is, is to be divine. That's our faith in a sentence. To be fully human is to be divine. And in a sentence, it's how to live. How to live as one who is holy and whole, and how to affect others and whole communities to experience holiness and wholeness for themselves. It's who Jesus is. It's who we are. And it's who and what we are called to be. Hillcrest family, as we walk through this Holy Week and as we walk through the rest of our lives, let us take these snapshots with us and share them with others in all that we do. And let all of Jesus' followers and siblings say together, Amen. Amen. Healer of our every ill, especially when we find it difficult to believe or trust that sorrow will end. We come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you're at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. Even when we can't seem to believe it, we know that you see the beauty in our brokenness. We pray especially for those who feel there is no end to sorrow, no matter what we do or how hard we work to bring peace and justice to the world. It feels like we cannot gain traction. Just this week, there are many who are in mourning and despair over the recent acts of violence in our country. We pray that you give them strength and reassure them that hope is not lost. We give thanks to you that when we can't bring ourselves to the healing source of your love, there are others around us that through words and actions bring us hope once again. Help us to also be those who offer hope when we have the opportunity on this parade of compassion called life. And let's join together to offer support and prayer to those members of our community in need of a special prayer. For Betty, for Ariana, for Anne, John, Kathy, Ron, and Gail. For Barbara on her passing and her family who mourn. And Lord, let us join together in saying those words that you taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Throughout Lent, we have learned that although we are broken, we are yet whole. Today, Jesus' entry into Jerusalem signals that the light is coming after the long season of darkness. We are coming out of this year of darkness, strengthened by our bonds with each other and the continuation of our church's mission in the community and the world. My friends, This is the second year we will not be able to experience the beautiful Easter garden in our precious sanctuary. You may recall that last year we all donated our flower and fund money to refurbish our azalea garden and purchase the peace pole. This year we're hoping you will honor your loved ones by donating to help beautify our campus along Gregory Lane, where landscaping has been torn up for various reasons. You can mail checks of $15 or more to the office or submit an online donation. To designate your donation in honor of or in memory of an individual or group, please email this information to the Hillcrest office by Tuesday, April 6th. On the Sunday following Easter, a list of donors and those honored and memorialized will accompany our Sunday worship e-blast. Please also continue to sing pledges or offerings through the mail or online. Your generous gifts of time, talent, and treasure help assure that the important work of Hillcrest will continue. Let us pray. Divine healing God, we thank you for holding us in your light through this long, dark year. Bless these gifts and these givers as they continue to support the essential work of our church. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above you heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy
Throughout our Lenten worship series, we've seen over and over again how Jesus' healing actions get responses from onlookers. In today's two lessons, we get those two different reactions from the crowd. Shouts of adoration in the Palm Sunday Gospel and the scoff of judgment in the second Gospel reading. Jesus continued his work either way and any way. Jesus loves those deemed unlovable, proclaims healing in the midst of despair. Jesus urges his followers to give their best in the midst of the worst circumstances. It's not easy. Jesus never said it would be. But it is the way that we become whole and help others and our whole world to become whole, to participate in the holy endeavor of bringing the kingdom the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Let it be so. We walk with Jesus through Holy Week. Jesus and God's Holy Spirit walk with us into life. Amen. Now go with confidence that God is making us whole and holy, recovering our depth of love for all, and our joy of living in the world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears, I am with you. I am with you. Go with God. Amen. I invite you now to extend yourself to others and open yourself up to others and to the Spirit of Christ as we say together, the peace of Christ be with you. And respond and also with you. Our service has ended. For those of you worshiping on Sunday morning, March 28th, 2021, know that we will be gathering at 11 a.m. via Zoom for a special time of fellowship, including a brief service of Holy Communion. I invite you to prepare ahead a small piece of bread or substitute and a small cup of juice or substitute. The information to join that meeting has been circulated. If you're worshiping with us for the first time or otherwise have questions about it, please email me now at revfred.hillcrest at att.net. And a reminder that as you listen to the prelude, slides with the news of community will come up on the screen. Please pay attention to all of the announcements and stay connected this Holy Week as we post an introduction to Holy Week on Monday 
as we meet for a special discussion on race and faith on this Wednesday in Holy Week, as we join in our online Tenebrae service on Holy Thursday, and as we join with other Bay Area churches for an online worship service on Good Friday. And then, of course, as we gather for Easter Sunday worship and fellowship next Sunday. I hope to see you at our Zoom fellowship gathering at 11 a.m. today and throughout the week. Go in peace. Shelter in peace. Experience your connection with God and each other and with the whole of creation in peace. Amen. Amen.